your wisdom tonight. Anointing us with the how your wonders tonight. Unto glory, thou hast made a way for us. You've called us to free. You've made us free. We'll lay in our... Oh, God. Send the rain, Lord. Send the rain. Send the rain. Send the rain. Send the rain, Jesus. Send the rain. Send the rain. Send the rain. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful day. Give the light of rain of your will to do, of your presence, give the deliverance to all. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We don't need another political uprising. We don't need another conqueror on the scene. What we need is a special word that will burn within our hearts and give us direction from above. We need a word from the Lord, a word from the Lord, just one word. And I understand it. Though we lack the very love you show in the sun. Though we walk to the end of that ways. And we stand so much to gain. So give us your word, Lord. Speak, Lord. Just one word from the Lord will move all the doubts and cause the sun to shine and give a peace of mind. Speak, Lord.
Praise the Lord, saints. God bless you. Welcome to our Thursday evening Bible study. And there is a word from the Lord, and hopefully you will sense the urgency of this word. And so let's go right into our prayer time and invite the Lord in to move upon us, to breathe upon us, to give us ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come this evening to give you praise and to glorify your name. We come to thank you for what you've done and what you're doing even now. We thank you for your mercy and your grace that you bestowed upon all of your people. We thank you for this viewing audience that comes religiously to hear a word from you. We pray that you would be the ministering spirit tonight, that you would breathe a fresh anointing, that you would anoint these lips of clay and give me what to say and how to say it. Let this not be an ordinary message, but let it be an extraordinary message that touches and penetrates the hearts and mind of your people that are willing to do a service for you. We ask you in the name of Jesus to have your mighty way. Let the will of the Lord be done as we be challenged by your divine word. And it's in Jesus' name we have prayed and we give you thanks. And the people of God said amen and amen. God bless you, saints, and welcome to our Thursday evening Bible study. And there is another word from the Lord. And our challenge tonight is in the form of a question. Are you available? Are you available? And before we start, uh, in the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter and the eighth verse, and it reads, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And I hope that when we ask you this question, whether or not you're available, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to hear the voice of the Lord challenge you to know whether or not you're available to do kingdom service for him. And hopefully your response will be, here am I, Lord, send me. So the Lord bless you tonight. I looked up the word available. It means to be used or obtained at someone else's disposal. To be used or obtained at someone else's disposal. It means not to be otherwise occupied. It means to be free to do something not currently involved in a relationship that keeps you from responding to the call of availability. Now, I know that had I just challenged you with the question, are you available? You would have done just like me. Number one, you would ask for what? Then you would have asked the next question, when? And the third question you would have asked is who wants to know whether or not I'm available. And you know that I have a habit of being transparent and sometimes I'll get a call uh, from my secretary after one of you have called the secretary. I'll get the call at home and for sale she'll call and say, Dad, are you available? The first question I say is when? And then she gives me the date that I'm, I'm desired to be available. Then I ask her for what? And then she'll tell me for what? And then I ask her this question, who wants to know? And to be honest with you, depending on who's calling, sometimes I say, I'm not available. And I know you can identify with that because you are challenged. There are times when people request services of you, request your time, and you ponder who it is, what they want me to do, when they want me to do it, and then that's when you determine whether or not you are available. So I was thinking about back in the days when we had the little rotary phones and uh, we children enjoyed answering the phone for our parents. And the phone would ring and one of the children would run. Matter of fact, we, we would be almost running over each other to try to answer the phone. We'd answer the phone and then my mother would say something like, who is it? And then we'll tell mom, it's for you. And we say, who's calling? We respond to her, who's calling? Then we, mom would say, well, what do you want? And depending on who it was and what they wanted, it determined whether or not my mother was going to come to the phone. And if it was someone who's always bothering her and have some kind of a no nonsense request, she would say, tell them, I'll call them later. But we're not talking about an individual person calling you, but we're talking about whether or not, now that you're saved, are you available for service of the kingdom? I'm not talking about church service. I'm not talking about church business. I'm talking about kingdom business. And all over my notes as I sat down, I kept writing these two words, souls are dying. Then when I got to the next page as I studied, I stopped 
again and I wrote, souls are dying. I believe that that, in a, that is an urgent uh, unction or response from God to let us know regardless of what's going on in the world, the protesting, the injustices, the coronavirus and COVID-19 and whatever ever things are happening, we must not be distracted from building kingdom and doing kingdom work. The Holy Ghost will give us wisdom how to navigate and to do and to win souls and to witness even during this time when we have certain restrictions. And what I'm doing now is I'm seeking God for the wisdom on how I might be able to continue to minister and to witness and to minister souls who are in the world who are dying, amen, who are dying without God. When I see millions of people protesting around the world, Amen. And I see, I mean, us preachers, we're marching with them and we're praying for them. But what about their souls after all of this is over? What about their souls? Someone has to keep in mind that kingdom business does not stop. Amen. Because there is a crisis. And the forefront of our mind should always be, what would the Lord have me to do now? God opens opportunities for me to witness every day every single day and most times i'm only going to the grocery store to get some dinner to buy some food something to cook every time i go there is an opportunity for me to witness either verbally or just by my conduct there's a way for me to impart some kind of hope into the lives of people a man who don't know the lord and so the challenge tonight is are you available to do kingdom work and not just church work now, if you listen really close to the messages that I've been sharing with you, preaching and teaching, amen, there will be no more business as usual at the Greater Glory Church of God in Christ. Amen. Souls are dying while we're simply having church. Souls are dying while we're simply having convention. Souls are dying while we're singing and preaching to the choir. Souls are yet dying. God did not save us simply to sit, amen, in our churches. I'm not preaching against going to church. I want you to come to church. We come to church to go to work. We come to church to go to work. We come to church to be equipped to do the work of the ministry. And the majority of the work of the ministry you'll see in this lesson is out in the highways and hedges where men and women are, where the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Amen. And God is looking for those of us who will make ourselves available to do kingdom work when this is over. And if you notice that no matter how we've prayed, no matter how many prayer chains we've had, no matter how we requested and begged God to turn this thing around, nothing is going to turn until we, the church, turn. Nothing is going to change until we, the church, changes. Why would God allow us to go back to business as usual why would God anoint us and revive us and refresh us simply to go into the four walls of our local church and sit there and entertain each other? Now, you, you have to be honest and fair. You have to be realistic. Amen. I'm not fighting the church. Amen. I'm fighting church business because the church is established place for the believers to come and assemble themselves together to get equipped to do work of ministry. And the majority of work of the ministry, you can see it every day. You can see it every hour out into the highways and hedges. Most people, most sinners are not going to be listening to this broadcast. Most sinners that are on social media are not tuning in to our singing, our choir singing, and, and tuning in to my teaching or my preaching. Amen. There might be a few. I heard that we did get a report that there was one viewer that did accept the Lord, and we praise God for that. Amen. But the majority of our work is done outside the walls of the church. Amen. So after we come to church and get excited and be refreshed and the anointing of God is in us and we become revived, once we come to church, then God is calling us to come out of the church and be about his father's business. And I think you should say amen to that. Look at the Bible examples we have in Luke 14 and 16. He says, and he sent his disciples at supper to say those to those who had been invited to come for all things are now ready. Verse 18, 
but they began to make excuses. One said, I just bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. In other words, I'm, I'm not available. I'm not available. Even though I've been invited, the master has invited me. Amen. Specifically invited me out of the midst of thousands of people. He could have requested their, their availability, but he invited me. And yet I'm saying to him, I'm not available. Verse 19, I bought five yoke of oxen. Got to go prove them. Please excuse me because I'm not available. Verse 20, I just got married and cannot come. In other words, we are not available for service. We're not available to come to this feast. After all of this preparation, we're not available to come. And let me pause right there. I want you to consider, and this is not in my notes, all the preparation that has made how God has prepared us from the time we accepted him as Lord and Savior, all that he's poured into us, all the teachings that you receive, amen, in the ministry is, it, is designed to equip you to be prepared when he summons you for your availability to be about your father's business. It's not simply coming to Sunday school and the Bible studies, amen, and the weekly studies and the morning services simply to get information that inspires you. It's supposed to inspire you to go and do what you were saved to do. Every single one of you were saved to serve. You don't need a title to do work in the, in the kingdom, in the highways and hedges. You need titles for the church, but you don't need the titles to do what God has called you to do. Search the scriptures and see how many individuals did God go into the church and, and, and cause them to go into his kingdom, into his vineyard and work. He went to the church as the custom was because he was a Jew on Saturdays. But when the Sabbath was over, amen, when the Sabbath was over, you found Jesus, number one, in the temple, reading an opening scripture, reading about himself, closing the book, giving it back to the minister, following, amen, the order of church, church, church polity, amen. And then you find him after church was over, out in the highways and hedges about his father's business. So what I want you to do is be preparing yourself, asking God to prepare you for when this is over and when there's a turnaround that you will be ready and available to respond to his call to build the kingdom. Now, first of all, the master specifically chose those that he invited. Does not the Bible say, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you? See, what I've been doing in this time of, of being alone is thinking about what the scriptures are saying. Can you imagine understanding that God says, Sam, you didn't choose me. I chose you. So out of all the billions and millions of people in the world, according to that scripture, God chose me. Amen. And equipped me to do what I'm doing now. Before my bones were formed in my mother's womb, God says he knew me and he didn't choose me or invite me, give me this specific invitation to come to him, drew me to him for me simply to sit down and preach to the choir. Again, it's going to be a challenge when you come back. No more business as usual. The kingdom must be first. If we're going to have an anointing, Amen. The anointing of God that God puts on our life is for service. That anointing is not for show. It's for service. It's not for show. Amen. If you consider and look out sometimes in our congregations and sometimes there's not a full, uh, the seats are not full. There's some empty seats. When I see empty seats, I see souls who need to be won into the kingdom of God. And sometimes we may have several hundred people in the service. But what about the empty seat? If there's only one empty seat, that matters to God. And I want you to develop that kind of mindset as we prepare ourselves, amen, for when God allows us to come back and do service for the kingdom. And so he invited specific people. And all of them began to make excuses. Amen. And so even now, Jesus is in need of individuals who are available to do kingdom work. 
available to do kingdom work. Why? Because the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. These are individuals who God has equipped to do kingdom work, but they're too busy doing other things, and they're saying to God, I'm not available. And so we must understand that our number one mission is to win souls. Number one mission, number one objective for doing anything is to win souls into the kingdom. Let's look at Matthew 21, verse 2 and 3. So Jesus, you know this story, but I want, I want to make an emphasis on this, on being available. Jesus needs a donkey to ride into Jerusalem. And so he says to his disciples, listen closely. When you find it tied with her coat, untie them and bring them to me. And if any man say anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them. Remember we taught, read the word distinctly. Go into the city, you find a coat, amen, tied, amen, a donkey and a coat tied. And then take them, untie them, because I need them. And if anybody, even the owner, anybody, the neighbors, anybody, asks you, why are you taking these donkeys and this coat? They don't even belong to you. Why are you doing this? You simply tell them the Lord has need of them. Amen. And I, I hope you can, can hear this spiritually resonating in your spirit like it did in mine. The Lord needs you. He has need of you. He needs you to prepare you to win souls into the kingdom of God. I believe somehow, amen, in the process of just being too churchy, we've lost the desire and the real mission for the Great Commission going into the highways and hedges and compelling men to come. And many of you that are viewing, you can remember that when you first got saved, you wanted to tell everybody, everybody in your world, amen, what God has done for you. And even when you came to church, you want to testify. I can remember that so many people would stand up to testify, amen. They would have to cut the testimony service off because people were jumping up. Amen. Giving testimonies. And the first thing they would say, I thank the Lord for saving me. Amen. Every day, I thank the Lord for saving me. I thank the Lord for sparing my life. Amen. Some 45 plus years ago. Sometimes I'm almost broken to tears when I go back and look back over my life and see how God had available individuals in the barbershop. We call him Barbershop Kelly. While he's cutting our hair, he cut most of the policemen's hair. And while he's cutting my hair on a Saturday, amen, evening, amen, he's talking to me about the God that he found. He's ministering to me about the God that he's found while he's cutting my hair. And he challenged me. He said, will you come to church tomorrow? Now, this is Saturday, and I'm preparing to do what sinners do. But he made the appeal. It was so appealing to me, so appetizing. Amen. So then when he asked me if I was coming to church, just before I walked out the door, I just said to him, said, yes, I'm coming. In other words, yes, I'm available tomorrow. And he looked at me. He says, it is the Lord's will that you come. So what do you think happened? So all that night while doing, while doing what sinners do, this is what I heard in my mind all night. It is the Lord's will that you come. Are you getting this? It is the Lord's will that you come. He didn't condemn me about my lifestyle because I remember how he was living. That's one of the reasons I was attracted to him because I knew how he lived before he accepted Christ. And I saw the change in his life. The Bible does say that we are the lights of the world and we're like a city that sits upon a hill that cannot be hid. But he also says we're the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, it is good for nothing. Amen. Could it be that we have become good for nothing? Could it be that we've become good for nothing when it comes to the kingdom of God? Could it be that our lights have gone out when it comes to the kingdom of God? These souls that God has prepared, amen, to receive that word, to have the word planted, or to have the word watered by us, 
as his available uh, workers. Amen. These individuals are ready and hungry, waiting for us to come to them and convince them, not convict them, but convince them that it's a better way. What are these precious brothers and sisters going to do when all of their efforts and their protesting does not get them where they desire to be? Not only emotionally and, and physically, but what about spiritually? There'll still be a, a longing for something greater than what they have received. And that's where we come in as a church. Ministry does not stop, amen, when this is over. Amen. Ministry actually starts when all of this is over. We need to be about our Father's business. Why? Because souls are dying. That's the urgency, amen, of this call, to determine whether or not you as a believer are available to do kingdom work. And the Bible lets us know that when he challenged them to go out and do that which seemed impossible, he empowered them to do it. The way has already been made. And immediately, when we, when, when, when we send, or when he sends us out, amen, he wants to know, are you available now? Not tomorrow. Are you available now? Praise the Lord. And so I, I thought about an example as I was studying this lesson. You've heard the story before, but it has a new, a fresh meaning to me now. When I gave you the example of when I led, her name was Sister Anderson, Amen. I led her to the Lord. I led her to the Lord out in the streets. I led her to the Lord in her home because I believe I was taking a, a report for a runaway. One of her daughters had run away and I was there taking this report. Now, when I first got saved, amen, I would minister even on my job when I was not supposed to. My supervisor told me because often when I'd be ministered sometime down on Lake Washington to older seniors and I would be praying with them and leading them to the Lord. You know how zealous you were when you first got saved? We need to get that back. Amen. But whenever I was with someone, I would always minister to them and ask them if they knew the Lord. Almost every single time those individuals, black, white, or whatever, would accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And I would stay with those people and visit those people, go to their funerals, amen, minister to them until the time that God called them on and they transitioned to be in heaven. Amen. And so what this one, this sister that I administered to, amen, she was about 54 years old, so you know I was younger. And uh, this was the same time that I desired to go to New Hope Church. I was, I was scheduled as the main speaker on Sunday morning at New Hope Church. So I just knew God wanted me to go down to that Baptist church and preach, amen, the gospel to those Baptist people. Praise the Lord. I just knew that was God. And I go to my pastor and I say, Pastor, I have an appointment to speak down at New Hope this morning. And, and uh, he says, you can't go. Amen. In other words, you're no longer available for that appointment. You can't go. And so I say to him, and because I was young and not as seasoned as I am now, I kind of spoke to him uh, kind of abruptly. And I says, what are you talking about? I can't go. Do you mean to tell me that God wants me to be here sitting in this church instead of preaching down to those people who you people, you Pentecostal people say are not saved? Now, keep in mind, I'm new. I'm fresh. Amen. And so I'm talking to my pastor that way. And my pastor looked at me very calm. He says, I am going to need you. I'm going to need you. And I sat down, reluctantly sat down. Matter of fact, I was singing in the choir with Ron L. McGraw, Sister Jean, and the rest of them, the Ruffins, have you. And we had on our, our robes with the little, little whatever this stuff is, all little fake diamonds on the top, whatever you call it. And I'm in the choir singing with an attitude. Amen. So you know God wasn't listening to me. But I'm singing in attitude because he would not allow me to go and preach the gospel to those souls down the street. Well, Sister Anderson stood up and she says, I thank the Lord for saving me. And soon as she said that, she dropped dead right there in the service. The service went up. People were shouting, dancing. I can see them now. I know them by name. Speaking in tongues under the assumption that this was the move, a supernatural move of God. And instinctively, because of my training, I ran across the pulpit, ran down to the, to the seat where she was sitting, grabbed her, 
Deacon L.C. Jones, a good type player myself, and pulled her out of the seat because I knew it was something medical, threw her down on the floor while the organ was playing, and began instinctively giving her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. And while I was down there breathing and trying to get this lady to breathe, praise the Lord, my pastor looked at me and said, I told you I was going to need you. You, you didn't get that. I told you I was going to need you. And the times when we think we need to do something, there's something more important that God wants us to do. Did you get that? There's something more important than what you're doing when God needs you. If I had not obeyed my pastor and stayed, chances are she would have not have lived. But instead she lived to rejoice and to praise God Amen. And last time I saw her daughter, she's in the church. Her daughter is saved and serving God. Amen. Because I made myself available at a time when I didn't want to be available. Amen. So when God calls you, it's the right time. When God calls you, when God summons you, it's for you to do something that's greater in importance than what you want to do. Amen. So the question is, are you available? I heard a song. I don't know where I heard it at. Amen. Lord, I'm available to you. We sing it, but are we really available? The Bible tells us that when we sing, we sing with understanding. What are you saying? You're saying, God, there's nothing that I will put in front of you. Nothing is more important than what you need me to do. That was Saul, I believe it was, when he encountered God. He says, what would you have me to do? You should be asking God now, what would you have me to do? And if God does not speak directly to you, amen, you have a pastor, amen, you have leaders who can show you, can look at your, your spiritual giftedness and show you where you can, can find yourself, making yourself available to be about your father's business, amen. I think I'm excited about this lesson because there's an urgency and I feel an urgency in my spirit. So if I'm going a little fast, amen, it's just too bad. Praise the Lord. All right, so you got to remember that when God operates, he operates in the now. Now is the acceptable time. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. So then this will be a time to start preparing yourself to be ready, to be available whenever there is a service that needs to be done for the kingdom. If you want to be anointed, you sit back and you watch all of these so-called anointed people. You listen to them sing. You hear them preach. I do it. You hear them preach. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. Amen. If you just avail yourself to him, he will use you. Let's look again at Luke 14 and 21, I believe, and maybe verse 24. Listen what he says. He says, go quickly. There's that urgency that I was feeling, the urgency I was talking about. Go quickly into the streets and the alleys. This is the NIV. Go quickly into the streets and to the alleys and get the poor, the blind, the lame. Amen. The lame folk. These are folk who are available. And if you call them, they will respond immediately. Amen. These are individuals who won't make excuses. Look at verse 24. Verse 24. He says, I tell you that none of those, not one of those that I invited will get a taste of my supper. Not one. Now you notice that the purpose of God, of, he first invited guests, specific people. But his purpose was that his banquet or that his, 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 his feast that his dwelling would be full. He wants it full. He does not want one seat that's, that's missing a person. He wants it to be full because he's prepared for a multitude of people. He says that my house might be filled, that it might be full. And because the invited people were not available, he says, go into the highways and hedges and compel men to come. Don't you know that there are souls out there that God has prepared for you to come and get them. I believe that. There are souls out there that God has prepared for you to come and plant a seed and water a seed. 
He said his harvest is ripe. That means they want to be picked. His harvest is ripe, but his laborers are not available. Matthew 6 and 33. These are familiar scriptures, but I want you to get them in your spirit because I'm going to keep saying it until the Lord blesses us to come back. When we come back, I'm going to have this same spirit. You know this is the way I've been. Amen. This is the way I've been. I always make sure that I go into the highways and hedges before I come to church. I always make sure that every day I go out and I look, amen, for those or so that God may have prepared. If it's no more than doing something nice, if it's no more than feeding someone, if it's no more than encouraging someone, I go looking for those individuals. I go looking into his harvest, into his vineyard for individuals who want to be blessed. And what really shocks me is when I go out and be a blessing to someone that I don't know. Someone that's not African-American. Amen. I do that intentionally on occasions. And then once I bless that person, the person looks at me and says, and God bless you. I know that's God. There are souls out there that are hungry and thirsty for what we have. Amen. And if you want to get excited, if you want joy, if you want anointing, if you want to be revived, then say to God, I'm available. If you need somebody, Lord, here am I, send me. You don't have to give him a resume. You don't tell him that you're slow, you're slow of speech. You don't have to tell him about your, your defaults and, and your shortcomings. Just say, God, I'm available. And God will find a place for you to work in his kingdom. Amen. So having oxen and having land and being married and having stuff and getting stuff and acquiring stuff is not a sin. It's only a sin when you put it before seeking the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these things, God said, I'll make it possible for you to have them. All these things will be added to you. But we spend more time trying to build our own kingdom and trying to build man's kingdom, which is the church, amen, which is the physical church, rather than building the kingdom of God. And God has no problem with us building a church, but what God does not want is us to lose focus, amen, once we've established a congregation and now we have a church and we focus mainly on those inside the church as opposed to those who are out in the highways and hedges who won't come to church, amen. Does not the Bible says to go out in the highways and hedges and he uses the word compel them to come? Amen. Compel them to come. Encourage them to come. Give them a reason for coming. Amen. It's time for us to be about our father's business. And you know that I'm right. You know I'm right because you've heard it a thousand times. You know I'm right because you read it. You know I'm right because someone came and compelled you. Someone ministered you, to you. Someone witnessed to you. And that's the reason you're in the church right now. In Matthew 4, uh, 18 and 20, here is a good example. Jesus sees his disciples casting nets into the sea or into the lake. And he didn't ask them. You, you got to listen at this. He didn't ask them if they were available. He simply said to them, come and follow me. Come and follow me. Now keep in mind, these are fishermen. Peter and the rest of them, they're fishermen. This was their trade. This is how they made their money. This is how they, they, they were able to live. This was their livelihood, fishing for fish. Jesus said, come and follow me. Listen, look at the availability of these disciples. The Bible says immediately they dropped their nets and followed him. Nobody made an excuse. Nobody say, we've got to get our, a certain amount of fish today in order that we might be able to su supply the necessary things that we need. Amen. Or I need to go home and do this. I need to go and tell someone goodbye, whatever. The Bible said immediately they dropped their nets and followed him. And God is saying, are you really available? If you're available, stop what you're doing right now. Amen. If you're really available, stop what you're doing right now and allow him to prepare your heart and your mind to do kingdom work. They dropped their nets and followed him. 
Amen. Immediately they made themselves available. Amen. So whenever it is and whatever it is, amen, God is saying, asking you the question, are you available? Amen. Are you available? Are you going to drop whatever you're doing and follow him? Are you ready, amen, to be used? Are you available? So then what you can do right now, I'll give you just about 30 seconds. Check your calendar and see if you're available, amen, to do kingdom work now. That's enough time. Amen. Guess what? You're too late. You're too late and God's got somebody else. That's how important it is to God. Souls are dying and God does not have the time to wait for us, amen, to, to, to put us, to put aside, to, to accomplish all the things we want to accomplish fleshly and naturally before we be about our father's business. Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, God saved you to witness. Amen. If you want to have joy and peace and all this stuff that you're missing right now, it's because you're not doing what God has called you to do. Amen. When I first got saved, I would get me some tracks. Amen. And sometimes I might just leave a track in the restroom or leave a track at the bus stop. Amen. And I guarantee you somebody read that track. Amen. At the bus stop or in the restroom. Amen. Praise the Lord. Little simple things like that. You don't have to be standing on the street corner and preaching. You can just be about your father's business. As Jesus said, he went about doing good. And then when you do good and you let your light shine, then people will be asking you, amen, to explain to them this, the Bible said, this reasonable hope that you have in Christ Jesus. I know people be watching me and wondering why I'm so excited and happy during this COVID-19. When I go out, I'm not sad. When I go out, I'm, I'm engaging. When I go out, I, I speak to people that I don't even know. When I go out, I help people. I went into, up to SARS where I normally go, amen, in the parking lot. And a person walked up to me that works at SARS. And I thought he was just giving me the little dap. We both had on gloves. And he kept hitting my hand again. And he kept hitting my hand again. And he says, can I bless you? Can I bless you? I said, sure. And he put some money in my hand. I didn't have a need. Amen. But he put some money in my hand and blessed the man of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So there are people out there that's waiting. Amen. For you to come in and engage them. Praise the Lord. Because souls are dying because we are not available to do kingdom work. And that's a good place to say amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. And so sometimes we think that we have to be prepared, amen, to do this work. But what I found out is that we demonstrate to God that we are available first and then the preparation starts. We make ourselves available first, then the preparation starts. When he called his disciples, he says, come and follow me and I will make you to become fishers of men. If you follow me, I'll make you to become. And you know how Jesus would send them out two by two and, and they would go out and sometimes they didn't get it quite right. They'd come back and once on one occasion they says, what shall we do? We saw some other individuals who were preaching the gospel, but they, should we tell them to come? They would not follow us when we asked them, amen, to come and be with us. Amen. Should we call fire down from heaven and devour this man? Praise the Lord. And Jesus said, you don't know what manner of spirit you have. If they're not against us, then they are for us. Got to have the right spirit when it comes to the kingdom. They may never come to your church. Amen. But you can plant that seed and you can water that seed. For the Bible says there's one that planteth, there's one that watereth, but it is God that gives the increase. So do you see how important it is for us as people of God when God is preparing hearts, amen, he's preparing the ground of, of individuals' hearts. There's millions of them out there waiting, amen, for you to plant that seed in that heart that God has prepared or water that seed in that heart that someone else has planted, amen. It's time, brothers and sisters, to be about our Father's business. 
Now, I don't know how I'm sounding, amen, on this, on this broadcast right now, but I do know how I'm feeling. I'm just as excited as I was when I first met him because I'm at the point of realization that souls are dying because we are not about our father's business. And God is not going to let us come back business as usual. We're not going to come back and just have our choirs and have our little programs and stuff and have this so-called anointing. The anointing is for service, brothers and sisters. The anointing is for us to be about our father's business. Praise the Lord. And I want you to make yourself available for this fresh outpouring of the Spirit of God that we're going to receive so that we can be about our father's business. In Matthew 16 and 24, then Jesus told his disciples this, if anyone wants to come after me, he must first deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. If you're going to be one of his disciples, you've got to take up your cross and follow him. Amen. There's, the cross is representative of suffering. The cross is representative of denying. The cross is representative, representative of you being willing to do whatever it takes to fulfill the great commission of God, and that is to win souls into the kingdom. Amen. Now, this is a basic gospel kingdom message. It's not exciting, is it? It's not exciting, is it? It's not as exciting as it used to be. Amen. Everything else has taken precedence over the great commission of God. And that's where the anointing is. That's where the anointing is. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, that Jesus saves. Amen. There's so many good people. I don't recall what the statistics were. And so I, I was searching to see how many individuals who profess to be sinners. And there was a certain number, I can't remember, in the entire world. And these individuals professed to be sinners and enjoyed being sinners. Not the ones, and then there was a group, a certain percentage of people who professed to be sinners and had a desire to be saved. And those are the individuals that we are sent to because no one can come to the Father except by the Son, and no one comes to the Son except the Father draws them. But once he prepares their hearts and prepares their mind, then it has to be one of us who's available to minister to those hungry and hurting souls. Amen. In Matthew 21 and 28, 28 the father, another example of being available. The father tells his son to go to work in the vineyard. And first he said, I will not go. But later he changed his mind and he went. So the first son said, I will not go. I'm not available. And then he changed his mind and he went. In verse 30, then he goes to his other son. And he told his, asked his other son, are you available? Will you go? And the other son said, I will and I'm available. But he did not go. And the question was posed, and which one did the will of God? Well, it was the one who at first said he's not available, then changed his mind and says, I will go. And the question I pose to you tonight is, which one are you? Are you the one who said, Father, here am I, send me, I'll go, and then change your mind? Are you the one that said that, Father, I'm not available, and then made yourself available? You choose. You know which one you are. But the challenge tonight is for you to hear God saying, that I need you to build my kingdom. My Bible said Jesus made his own mission statement. He says, I came to seek and to save those that are lost. The miracles that he wrought, amen, was so that the individuals that he encountered would know, listen to this, that he had power on earth to forgive sins. He didn't come just to demonstrate he had power to work miracles, but again, his mission was to win the lost, to seek and to save those that are lost. And we have been given the same task. Amen. All right. The tax collectors, the Bible says, listen at this, it's in that scripture. The tax collectors, the harlots, 
will go into the kingdom of God before you. Before who? Before those individuals, you and I, who said we had something else more important than kingdom work. We were not available. We are not coming. Not at this time. Maybe at a later time. He says, well, the harlots and the tax collectors will go into the kingdom of God before you because they are willing and because they are available for service. So you got to remember, we're talking about being available to respond to the call for service to build the kingdom of God. Available to the call of service to build the kingdom of God. Even when he sent his disciples to Jerusalem, sent them to the upper room and told them to stay there until you are endued and endowed with power from on high. He said that then after they receive it, then I want you to go ye into all the world and do what? And preach the gospel. All the world and preach the gospel. So Jesus always kept in the forefront preaching the gospel that men might be saved. And we can never forget that. If that's not our mission, we might as well not have church. If that's not our mission, we might as well close up church. And brothers and sisters, you mark my words, nothing is going to change until God's people change. We are the ones that's holding this up, not the sinners, because they don't know. We are the ones. If my people, I hear it every time I'm searching, every time I turn I go to social media. I hear that prayer. Every prayer chain, I don't care if there's five people, ten people, somebody in that group is going to pray. If my people, 2 Corinthians 7 and 14, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their lands. Nothing is going to change until we change. And if we be honest and fair with our own souls, we are not postured to change. I want that to sink in. We are not postured to change. We can fool each other, but we cannot fool him. Amen. All of us, our thoughts and our intentions are exposed to him. Amen. He sees us. He knows us. He knows what I'm going to do after he's challenged me with this word. He already knows. Amen. So we cannot fool him. So until the church changes, there's not going to be any change. Amen. Until the church turns back to the Great Commission and have as its primary, primary effort to win souls into the kingdom of God. There's not going to be a fresh anointing. There's not going to be a fresh revival. There's not going to be a moving and, a, and, a, uh, and, and God defeating our adversaries. For what? For our own benefit? For our own self-gratification? No, brothers and sisters. It's all about the kingdom of God. Amen. So then we're not talking about not going to church. But we're talking about going to church, being equipped to do work of ministry, and then going to work. That's simple. Simple task. And there's time, amen, that God gives us to do that. Amen. And so we have to make sure, brothers and sisters, that we are preparing ourselves to be available to be about our Father's business. Amen. And I had some other observations that I found somewhere. Amen. And they're here somewhere. But nevertheless, we need to be about our Father's business. Because souls are dying without God. They're dying because there are not enough available believers and saints of God who are willing to go out and do what God has called us to do, which is to win souls. It has never changed. To win souls is the great commission of the church. I noticed something as I close. Several states have realized that they open too soon. Again, I take my notes as I watch the news. Several states are acknowledging now that they open too soon and they're causing more damage than good. Amen. So guess what they did? They went back to phase one. I can't remember what the states were, but they went back to phase one. And again, I told you, whenever I hear something like that, 
I try to make it relevant, amen, to what's happening now. Maybe as a church, as the people of God, we need to go back to phase one. We need to go back to phase one and be about our father's business. I was listening to Bishop Patterson. I guess that would be J.O. Patterson, not G.E. Patterson. So you know how long ago that message was. And this is what he said. Now you think I thought I was tough, amen, and have tough messages and controversial messages, but this was many, many years ago. And he said that our convocations, when he became bishop, he says the first thing that he did is shut up all of the sailing that was being done. He said he wanted to close all meetings that were being held while we were in the main auditorium seeking God for change. He said, because when we come together, God wants us all together. You have to listen to it. You have to Google it. J.O. Patterson's message. Amen. It was a powerful, challenging message. And all he was trying to say is that we can't allow ourselves to lose focus. Amen. The church has to be the church. When we come together for the holy convocation, he was simply saying it needs to be a holy convocation. And let me tell you what else he said. He says, let's take care of that kind of business in April. You say, well, what does this have to do with this lesson? What it has to do with this lesson is that it encourages me when I read the word and then hear the fathers of our church preach that same word. That encourages me. That does not discourage me. It encourages me to stay focused and not to lose focus as to what church really should be about. Amen. So I think it's a good message for the church. We need to go back to phase one. Amen. To doing the Great Commission. Jesus declared his vision statement. I came to seek and to save those that are lost. That was Luke 19 and 10. So as a church, our mission is to preach the gospel to the lost that they might be one and to the kingdom. We got to focus more on coming to church to be equipped and to be made available to do kingdom work as opposed to simply coming to church just for the sake of coming to church. I hope this message at least challenge you, amen, to make yourself available in the event God calls you to do kingdom work. Souls are dying, brothers and sisters, even in our families. Souls are dying. Amen. Our loved ones who don't know the Lord. Amen. We must be about our Father's business. And so I'm asking you tonight to pray with me and ask God to make you available, help you to see the seriousness of this message. Because again, nothing's going to change until we change. Nothing's going to turn until we turn. Amen. We should be seeking the kingdom. We should be hungering and thirsting after the things pertaining to the kingdom. Amen. Why would God anoint us simply to sit? Why would God save us simply to sit? You were considered valuable and important to God. Amen. And these souls that are out there now who are broken in their spirits are going to need a place to come. I got a call. I don't know who it was from. And this person, I can quote their text. You and your wife are in my prayers consistently. And then the last part of that request was when is your church opening? And I guarantee you, this is not a member of our church, but here is a person who's hungering and thirsting to come into the congregation so they can be blessed. So brothers and sisters, let's make ourselves available for him. Amen. Prayer is one means of doing that. And before I sign off, don't forget our Zoom at 7 p.m. on Friday. 7 p.m. on Friday evening, evening, the Zoom. Amen. And so hopefully you'll be able to chime in. Praise the Lord. You'll be able to watch it. Amen. And thank you so much. Praise the Lord for your tithes and your offerings. I went to the mailbox today and, and some of you are so faithful. And you're making my job a whole lot easier. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Paul even said that he wanted to give himself to fasting and praying 
He wants to give himself to seeking God for a word. And I thank God for you that are responding in your gifts. Amen. You that are members of the church. We're even receiving uh, monies from those who are not members of a church. Thank you so much because this allows me to give myself to the word of God. And you know me, I, I put no burden on the people of God. I minister to you because this is what I'm called to do. I want you to be blessed. Amen. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep seeking God. Amen. And ready yourself for Sunday. Ready yourself for uh, Friday at 7 p.m. Make yourself available for Friday at 7 p.m. and also for our Sunday morning service. There is a fresh rhema word from God. Let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, humbly before you, thanking you for a word that challenges us to get our priorities straight. Amen. To make sure that we make ourselves available for you when you call. We pray, God, that you would give us a fresh anointing, a fresh hunger and thirst, a fresh desire to be about your business, and that is winning these lost souls who are hungering and thirsting for a word of God, hearts that you have prepared, who you have designated and preordained to be saved, simply waiting for us to give the invitation to go where they are because, God, they're not coming where we are. They're not watching our program, but they're out there in the highways and hedges and waiting for us to make ourselves available to come and minister to them. And so in the name of Jesus, those who are listening now, I pray for fresh anointing. I pray for fresh oil. I pray for a fresh move of your spirit to resonate in their hearts and minds, even now, God, so that our preaching and teaching will not be in vain. And I pray in Jesus' name that after this lesson, this coming together, somehow you would open a door that there would be an opportunity for us to minister to a soul that needs to be won into the kingdom. And this would be my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So brothers and sisters, make yourself available for the service of the kingdom. And God bless you. We thank you for joining the broadcast of Greater Glory Ministries. It's our prayer that you've been challenged and encouraged by the word and empowered to make a godly difference in the world. We appreciate your continued financial support of our ministry through your tithes and offerings via Cash App, PayPal, and Giveify. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, we would love to hear from you by calling our intercessory prayer line at 888-723-6419, extension 7. We invite you to subscribe and to stay connected with us on our social media platforms via Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel at GGM Seattle. Be sure to join us for our Thursday night Bible study at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every Sunday for greater glory in the morning at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. On behalf of our pastor, Superintendent Sam Townsend Sr., yours truly, Mother Gwendolyn Lawson Townsend, and the entire Greater Glory Ministries family, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and your family. And as you continue through your week, remember to give the Lord the highest praise of hallelujah.